It's the perfect rivalry. The baseline player and the net rusher. Well, I think Bjorn Borg and, and John McEnroe has always been like a, a backdrop to, to my childhood. I mean, they were two great icons and, and some of the greatest icons of that era of the late 70s and early 80s. So it's certainly been, you know, an awareness, uh, particularly about John McEnroe. I'm born in 74, so when, when John, sorry, when Bjorn stopped playing tennis, I was, what, six years old? To me, I mean, they were very important. I was... Uh, grown up when they were playing. Uh, the 60s and 70s, uh, or uh, rather the late 70s and early 80s, we only had two TV channels in Sweden, which meant that anything that was on telly, uh, everybody saw and talked about the next day. When I was a kid, I, I didn't know about McEnroe, but uh, uh, I grew up in Iceland, and even there, Bjorn was a known figure in the media, because you got to follow his relationships and and business uh, struggle and all, all that all that stuff in the media so uh, as a, I, I didn't see the matches but I, I knew who he was I think um, in my private life I'm probably more like John McEnroe but on set I'm probably more like John Borg because I have to be like a leader I used to be more McEnroe but that was counterproductive, and especially uh, since, since uh, acting is not about winning, it's, it's about collaboration, and uh, you scare the <laughs> out of people, and that's not good. So I, I, I put the lid on, and I try to create a nice atmosphere around the camera and make everybody feel safe and happy, um, because the scene is never better than the weakest link in it, so everybody has to feel good. Yeah, I, I'm more of a Borg. And why is that important for you? Do you think? No, it's not important. It's just the way I am. Uh, it's uh, for me. It's uh, easier that way.